With burnt bush on either side, the Dreamtime Wildlife Refuge is one of a number of properties in Mount Victoria where residents are doing what they can to provide the food and water now desperately needed by wildlife after the destruction of much of their habitat by drought and the recent fire. would say that that's a male, male in there because of the dark features, um, male joey. So. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Having a conversation about it. Oh, he's, he's really really healthy he wants to this is, throw, throw the joey out I want to mate with you <laughs> he's having quite a conversation renowned wildlife carer Margaret Goff who's been encouraging wildlife onto her property for 40 years was particularly delighted today when this male wallaroo returned for the first time since the fires these wallaroos, which she once rescued and returned to the wild, are receiving much needed nutrients via the cool mix they learn to eat as joeys. While not everyone can be a registered carer, there is still much we can all do. The most important being to provide fresh, clean water. Birds do come and have a really good bath in it. Uh, on the bottom of this, I've got the sandstone and um, look, it has a bit of sediment at present, but what doesn't after the fires? Um, and that's okay because I top it up every day um, through this system. What happens is this particular one's supposed to have sediment because this is a refuge that tries to replicate nature. So we need a bit of weed, although this is a blue iris, but it really serves the purpose well because it's got the fronds and things like that. This is an old cast out iron bath and uh, and it's really solid so they can't put it like that. Uh, the reason I put the sandstone in the box is because if a little echidna goes in they can get out again. Um, I didn't want to put this uh, completely in the dirt because then it's really heavy for me to lift out whereas I can actually come along and scrub it out once a week and um, and I don't even have to lift it. You'll see there's no connection between those two bars. What I do is I will take the daily uh, scum off the top simply from um, the roos putting their hands in where they've been, the dry dirt and everything else. You can see scum forms around the the um, uh, entire basin. So um, into this water goes a water source that stops when it's full. I just bucket that into that after the scooping has been done and then that goes into the next. So it's like a little waterfall. At the same time I use the same nice surface water that Oh, look, I'll just show you. Look how clean it is. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So the surface water, don't, be, don't ever be worried about, look at that, what it looks like underneath. The surface water is what they drink. To dispel many of the misunderstandings and myths about what to feed native animals, Margaret went through some common food items which are often fed to wildlife. Do not leave out any type of milk. Don't even think that soy milk is good for them. That does cause problems. The other thing is bread. And it's a, it's a common thing. You've always got bread of some sort, but it actually gloves up their insides. Then we get to these things which are so good for us. Like we've got broccoli. In any of the brassicas, I think they're called, um, they will cause untold problems in the digestive system. So I've got um, a bit of leftover uh, broccoli. Oh, cauliflower is deadly. Celery, 
uh, creates a lot of wind and um, lettuce. Now what we're talking about is native animals. We're not talking about chooks, we're not talking about rabbits. Um, you can give them as much of this type of food as you like. Now the other thing that we don't like to give is onions and acidic like lemons. This here is the good things that you can use. These are preferable if they're pretty ripe. Not, not, not rotten, but ripe. Especially the banana. Especially the apple. Now we love to cr crunch a nice crisp apple, but in actual fact, um, birds love the less crisp. We have um, the berries, okay? Berries of any sort, strawberries are good and um, raspberries, blackberries, natural instinct, they must hone in on blackberries. But these are also things that they could go. Now corn, this actually is out of a tin. Okay, so this is where you can actually take it off a tin or if you've had leftover corn on the cob, you can uh, take that off the side as if you were eating it and just put it in like that. But I've, I actually have used tin corn or frozen corn. Um, and then we have the good old carrot and the good old sweet potato. Liz is pointing out the orange and I really wanted to mention that first because on the no tray is lemons and limes, kumquats, grapefruit, okay? Not even pink grapefruit, okay? No, no. This is a lovely orange. This is a plate of stuff that I've prepared all ready to go on a couple of dishes there, right? Now, mentioning the orange, I like to cut it like that and I always take the rind off. With this, I only put a taste. Now, um, possums actually like this, but they will only have a little bit. Um, you'll find after a couple of nights, they, they likely won't go to it. Uh, small birds may take it. Um, but you'll probably find that the majority of it is left on a dish, okay? So the apple, you can see what I've done here. I've actually taken the core out and I've skinned it. But this beautiful stuff here is the size that you would um, put it on the tray. Uh, because this is quite refreshing and it's another water source, it's another hydration source. This one here is the beautiful, please use only red uh, sweet potato. Um, I cut it to about that thickness, just enough to um, maintain the stability of the piece of fruit. And I generally take a piece that size, um, a, a slice that size and make it into six pieces. So that'll give you an idea. Um, so you can do a little of that, a little of that, loads of sweet potato, loads of carrot. That if you've got leftover sweet potato and carrot, they're very, very good for baby birds. So I always put that same, this is leftover from last night. You see, it's so soft. Right. So that's cooked? That's cooked, yeah. And normally I would have the niblets cooked as well, you know, like, and, um, or it would be a piece of leftover corn that I would take and on, you know, but that's straight out of the, the tin, and that's quite okay. That's quite okay. So don't be afraid to use that, right? See how lovely and soft that is? Now the reason that is going on the tray, that which I'll show you, is so that um, mums and dad birds, mummy and daddy birds, <laughs> male and female birds, um, um, will take a bit of that soft back, soft stuff back to um, regurgitate and feed to their chicks. Now with this, this is a very special thing because you don't put that on the same tray. Perhaps we could do that now. Okay. What I like to do with that, because it's, it's, they really love the sugar content. Um, and you'll find that ants will invade it. So on, you see, it's just so easy um, to peel. And of course, it smells really strong. It's quite alluring. And I, what I do with that, 
I actually put that just like that on a tray. Now while why I do that, it's a separate tile and I put that in a specific area. Um, and because I I don't do not want any water to invade that, okay, and I also don't want that scraping alongside um, other vegetables. What I'm actually doing here is a universal feeder so that if um, birds of any, any particular sort want to come down and take it, they can have a, a choice of that. That's, that provides quite a lot of nectar type food. Also, um, I have seen lizards um, be attracted to that. So as it, as, as it gets pulverised mm -hmm. by the bees, you know, and, and the little bits and pieces are going away, it en ends up pulp like that. And, and the lizards come in and they will take that just as that, okay? So it's really good. And then they, they're quite happy with it, um, with, them out, with having the ability to go up on that and then go back down on the grass. So for birds of all varieties, we're going to put that, okay? So I've got a little bit of that soft one there, okay? Uh, then we're going to go for the hard one. Mirror. And the hard one again. And then this little one. We're going to use all of that. And then we did have corn here somewhere, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. okay. And we had berries. So this is for birds, okay? Now, I personally wouldn't put any more on that plate. What we have to remember all the while, they still must rely on what is out there in the wild. So they still have to do their normal activities. They still have to dig for grubs. They still have to look for ants. And this is where this comes in handy because this is ant attracting. Um, if I were to take that out, now and use that one tray. I'd just put a little bit of hydration with it. So you can see that it's about a tablespoon. We're going to take that one down there and we'll put roux. Okay, so just remember sweet potato, carrot, raw. Okay, sliced as that and sliced as that. If you've got wild bird seed and you've got a platter of wild bird seed that's got to be changed every day don't put any more than three quarters of a cup out even if you see a lot of birds come to come to it three quarters of a cup will mean that all of that will get eaten and put it up on a high perch and put the um, food that plate of food well away from where that perch is uh, from where that food is simply because um, if they're on a perch, they tend to drop their poop and you don't want that landing in that area. Okay, so um, this is pretty simple for roos. Um, roos that um, are normally grazers, nocturnal grazers, they would benefit by these because they're red, red root vegetables, uh, the same as wombats. Um, echidnas might need a little bit more, but um, if, if food is attracting the ants, they will make do with that. You will get nocturnal predators, you will get uh, snakes will come and take the little ones and things like that if you don't change a little bit of the location, okay? Um, it, so change it about once a fortnight um, because while you can't see them, there are always predators. Um, 
Now that's that's um, a yellow-tailed black cockatoo. Okay, that sound. So he may be finding his roost, but I do know that there's a pair about five houses down and then across the road to another house. So whether it's the same, um, it's the same um, area, but they, it, it used, they used to bring their babies to that particular tree there, that gum tree there. And um, it could be the same pair um, and they would teach them how to collect food at that tree. He's determined little Noddy, because he might be extra hungry too. If he's been away that long. But he certainly isn't, you know, he's weathered well. I'd, I'd say he's run and run and run and then taking his time to come back. 